From a lifetime of love and now a growing fear for our natural world, my challenge is to climb some of the world's biggest and most beautiful trees, all in the name of promoting reforestation. We have all played a part in this destruction, and now we all need to play a part in its regeneration. We only have one world and the future of it and all its inhabitants is in our hands. So come climb with me as I seek out spectacular specimens and spruce social change. I am Kit and welcome to Kit Climbs. <laughs> I do not know if there is such thing as a perfect day, but wow, this feels very close. <sighs> and it's a good thing because I have a long distance to go ahead of me. But the more Ks I need to cover, the more chance there is for things to discover. <laughs> Let's go. So I am here on the island of Palawan in the Philippines. And if you've never heard of it, in recent years, it was voted by numerous publications as one of, and if not the most beautiful island in the world. And you just take a quick search online and you are met with picturesque images of white sandy beaches, crystal clear water and jungle covered mountains. Palawan is one of the most biodiverse islands in the Philippines and maybe the world, with parts of the island being UNESCO World Heritage listed and the famous underground river being named as one of the new natural wonders of the world. It, it truly is a spectacular place and I was so excited to come here and experience this pristine environment. Unfortunately, what I've been met with is far from what the postcards describe. Arriving here, I was met with just eye-opening poverty which in turn has led to a desperation to survive that just creates a great disregard for the preservation of the natural beauty that surrounds them. It takes just a quick glance on Google Maps to see mass illegal logging sites, mining locations, and the relentless spread of palm oil plantations that are already responsible for so much decimation of much of Asia's natural and vital forests. I'm incredibly thankful to be here now to witness what this island has to offer because, well, without immediate action, I really fear for the future of this island and that it's going to go in the direction of so many others in the region. I've seen small pockets of hope, but because of the lack of education regarding sustainable practices on the land and in the sea, the greed and control from faceless corporations, and of course the desperation to survive by so many, the world's most beautiful island is it's being consumed from the inside out. This place this just caught my eye. A tree planting activity. It sort of looks like they must get kids out here because there's all little signatures on here. They must get kids to come out here or they did at one point. Seems like it's been relatively disused for quite a while. But they've obviously come out and, um, and done a bit of planting. Which is great to see, considering so much of what's happening in this place is very much the opposite of that. So, I mean, it, it happens in, it has to happen in all cultures. If you can instill restoration and the importance of it within the younger generation, they're going to grow up with that as part of their, part of their being, part of their desire for taking care of this world. So... Lovely to see it. I just hope that there's a lot more of uh, stuff like this happening. So just a little bit further down the road, I came across this coconut plantation, but yeah, something about it just didn't seem right. It's where there would have been mangrove forests because just back further, I've seen, I've seen mangrove forests and they've cleared them. But I also just saw a sign warning about storm surges which is what mangrove forests are just amazing at protecting. So all of these houses here, just these, I mean, they're shacks, really, just really poor communities all through here, living in these bamboo thatched little shacks. Because of the fact that they've gotten rid of the protective barriers of those mangroves, they are so susceptible to those storm surges when they come through. Just up behind the bushes there are all these little shacks that have been built up on top of this hill. And then actively this bunch of guys just down here clearing this, uh, clearing this land. It's just about the fact that they're, they're clearing 
a native protection of their own home. Coconuts, rice paddies, and this is right on the coast, right on the water's edge. They have left no protection for these little houses that they live in. It looks like this area is being actively logged. Now, it's not a big operation, clearly. I mean, just a small pile of, of timber right there. But a big operation doesn't need mean that it's not gonna not have a big effect on things, right? Uh, so let's pull up the map right now, have a look at the bird's eye view of where I am right now, to get, because around me, well, it looks luscious and beautiful. But if we take that bird's eye view, I think it's gonna tell a completely different story. Now here it is, easy to tell, just little bits being slowly, slowly eaten away. Going through this landscape, it is spectacular. There is no sign whatsoever of those, plot, those those areas that I've just shown you on the map because they've clearly done it in an intelligent way so that people driving through here can't actually witness. It's not disturbing the, the view of the landscape. But in those troughs and those valleys, on the other sides of hills that uh, is not visible to me riding along here. <laughs> decimated, absolutely decimated. So I think this is one of those cleared valleys that I was talking about, that the loggers will go into. It's sort of like, this is well off the main road for sure. They'll clear the, particularly the flat area that's a lot easier to clear. And maybe there's some rules, unwritten or written, uh, about clearing into the hills. Some of them have definitely been cleared at some point. Um, so it'll initially be cleared and then because it's cleared people will start slowly moving in building just these little shacks and stuff whether or not they they purchase the land, get given it or just just claim it as their own and, and set up a house. This is sort of what it ends up with. And yeah, I mean, I can understand. It's just humans trying to make a living, trying to support their families and stuff like this. Ah, but it's just unfortunate that it's done in, a, in such a destructive way. The fact that they've removed all of the root system, all of the nutrients, all of the, the fungus, all of the seeds, there's nothing in there to regrow again. So it is actually gonna take human intervention to return that land back to the way that it should be. Whereas if it was left with scattered trees throughout it, some of the larger, more important species, rather than just well, one or two here and there, once humans are done utilizing this, this land, whether it's in the next 10 years or 100 years, the land has potential to return back to being these beautiful forests that, that we do still see all around us. I mean, at the end of the day, it is all supply and demand. So these look like rice fields or wheat fields or, or something like that. If we, and I'm sure there are, come up with better ways of, of harvesting and, and producing foods for the huge amount of people that are required to be fed every day, there is no reason that these pockets of land will continue to appear there's no reason to continue to clear forests because there's no demand for it whatsoever. I can't bloody believe it. I've done it. Oh my God, what an absolute victory. I, <laughs> I've just traveled seven hours. Oh, my bum is so sore, but oh, this is worth it. Wow, and there is not a soul here. I've got this little resort here in front of me. I'm not sure if it's abandoned or not, but just beautiful white sand, coconut palms on the beach. 
crystal clear water. We are going for a swim. We're going to find some fishies. Ah, I know I'm all about climbing trees, but I want to get in the water. But I'm not going to disappoint you guys. Add it to the tally. <laughs> climbing a... Oh, fell off a coconut palm. I'm climbing a coconut palm. <laughs> oh, look. But you've never climbed up a coconut palm this fast. <laughs> Made it all the way to the top. Look, little baby coconuts. Cute. <laughs> oh, just wish you were here to join me. Somebody, where are you? I'll be here for the next, next hour and a half, two hours. Sun's gonna set, it's gonna be beautiful. If you wanna come join me, I'll be here till then. I'll be out there. Let's go for a swim. Gee. It'd be hard pressed to just stand here and it'd be almost like almost, it's just so clear. Oh goodness, and the temperature. Absolutely stunning. I just found a friend. Oh, you're so dodges. Oh, he's a dodges girl. Oh my god, he's so sweet. Oh my god, you got your thing. Oh, let me go to it. <laughs> sweet ladies, yeah. <laughs> what a gorgeous girl. Yes, you are. Nice life here on the beach, eh, hey, sweetie? Yeah. Definitely an ongoing theme of mine <laughs> to find beach puppies. She was a beach lady, but oh, so damn friendly, aren't ya? Oh, coming for adventures. Ah, oh, this is a perfect place to finish things off. Oh, oh, there's a snorkeler out there. Oh, so nice. Yeah, this has been eye-opening. I didn't realize I would have to travel so far to find a beach, but this is my first little exploration into the north of Palawan. And next week we're going to go even further north. And then I'll make a decision on whether I stay up here further or longer, move over to another island and explore more. It's all up in the air as it speaks, but oh, lovely stuff, people. A fantastic day. A beautiful place to finish things off. There's a guy over there snorkeling. Yeah. Anyway, peace out, people. I'll see you next time. <laughs>